There's an old famous phrase. I'm sure many of you have heard. It takes a village to raise a child. But with how far we've come as a society, I think we can now say it takes a school to raise a child. I love schools, and I think they're really cool because it's more than a place. It's more than a center. It's the community, the village that comes together to nourish. Nurture and champion for the child. That's why I feel so lucky that I get to work on my passion: live and breathe schools. When I was young, I was one of those students that like to get extra homework. Do you know that? And then I like extra exams too. Like you won't believe it. And I also had a lot of different changes in schooling too. So by the time I was twelve, I've moved to three different schools: from a small public school. To a big public school and then a small private school. So friends change, people change, teachers change, but I love them all. But that aha moment of why I thought schools were so cool came to me much later in my life. When I'm at one of my school's campuses, I like to wait by the door at dismissal time to say bye bye to my students. Then one day there was this grade three student. As he tries to go back home, he does his little ritual. He says bye bye to friends here, friends there, and friends that were far. He would say bye really loud, and then when he was done with his ritual, he prepares to go back home. So at the door, I say to him bye bye, and then he turns around and looks up. So I thought he was gonna say bye to me, but actually he was just telling his friends come to school earlier tomorrow. This is very common. It's just an example that ignited something in me. But actually, these things happen every day. Kids love coming to school. I too love going to school when I was young. You see, when I was young, my parents were kind of ambitious. So, you know, they wanted me to be like this, and they had many ideas about how they wanted me to behave. I was a little helicopter, a little dragon, and a little tiger by my parents. I also had many, many ideas about who I wanted to. At some point, I wanted to be a soccer player. At another point, I wanted to be part of a music band. This is not including wanting to be a doctor, a scientist, an educator, an activist, and so on and so forth. I felt that when I was at school, my teachers and peers would support me and encourage me. And even if I did something wrong, I knew that when I turned eighteen, a whole new world waited for me at the university. So students like myself, and then students who come to my school, they come to school for more than just learning. School is a place that's more than just learning. We come to school to be with our friends, our peers, our teachers, and grow into the. Into individuals who can become leaders in the world. So schools are a place that brings similar age children in a physical setting to stimulate them academically and then prepare them for the real world through this microcosm known as school. Sometimes I hear in the media, and you will hear in the news and media that schools kill creativity or that schools make kids less intelligent. But I think what is happening here is that as we get a little more ambitious, as our idea of education is achieved, we want more out of education in school, and that's a good thing when we're ambitious because we work harder to make education better for children. In the future, how we teach, why we teach, and what we teach will change because society will have so many different demands upon us. But school has done so much for us throughout history. Let's take a look at what school has done for us since the beginning of times. Since the hunters and gatherers' times, school have existed, and people in the community came together to share their collective knowledge on plants, animals, and land. And then the idea of schools probably come from the Greek, because. From from the fourth century BC in ancient Greece, they call school "skolē," and the word "skolē" also means leisure in Greek. So from this word, you can infer that once upon a time, in order to go to school, you had to have leisurely time, and that kind of leisurely time was only available to the wealthy and the privileged. There were other prominent features of education in the Middle Ages: Middle East, China, and India. 
But the idea of schools that we know now with the four walls, a classroom and a building, that probably comes from the 18th century Europe. So since those days, we've gone to school for many reasons, for political reasons, religious reasons, and economic reasons. But I want to highlight an event that happened in 1948, and that also changed why we go to school. So at the end of 1948, end of World War II, after all the atrocities and violence that has happened in our world, the world came together. All the world's leaders came together to agree on a document. They all agreed to came to agree on this United Nations Declaration of Independence that Eleanor Roosevelt is holding. And there, in Article 26, Right to Education, it says, everyone has the right to education, and that schools should promote peace, tolerance, and friendship among all nations, regardless of racial and ethnic groups. This is groundbreaking because now you're going to school to exercise your human rights, to promote peace, tolerance, and friendship. This is leaps and bounds away from those times when only the wealthy and the privileged could go to school. Thanks to all these interests in education too, we now have people who start to research and study on children and education. In the 18th and 19th century, we have these educational philosophers like Johann Pestalozzi, who said learning through head, mind, and hand. And then Frederick Frobel, who started and coined the word kindergarten. John Dewey, progressive educational reformer and then a supporter of learning through doing. Maria Montessori, founder of Montessori Education and mother of Montessori Education, who said, respect the child. So thanks to all these philosophers, now we have people who respect the child and we, who believe that children can construct their own knowledge. Before that, when children went to school, they had to learn in a very strict environment and they had to learn by rote memorization. In fact, once upon a time, it was very common to have punishments on children and they were accepted as part of the schooling process. Now we can learn and children can own their own learning. At our school, for example, we learn through the project-based learning method so that even at a young age, children can know about the real world and that so they can own their own learning. This term, we wall hunger. So children learn how their food comes from, where their food comes from, and how much energy and effort goes into the food they eat every day. So they did this project, and after that, I showed them this picture. This is the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal meant to be achieved by 2030. I asked them, which of these can you help accomplish? And they tell me they can achieve no hunger. I asked them, how can you achieve this? Then they tell me they can reduce waste, they can share more, and be more knowledgeable about their food consumption. This is simply beautiful because from just simple learners, they're going to become change makers, problem solvers, and now they know they have a responsibility to our world. Thanks to all these advancements in education, schools can go beyond disseminating knowledge to children. Even at a young age, we can teach children that they're problem solvers and what they do in the world will have impact for all of us. That's why it's also important to go to school to promote peace and humanity through good citizenship. There is a very famous poem in Myanmar called Manigale by poet Siya Demo. It goes, Manigale, Manigale begala, enga twalola, Manigale bego twa, satin jang o twa, satin jang ma bari tin, sa ye sa pe tin, sa ye sa pe ba lo po, mani le ma po. So this poem is about a girl called Little Red One. It goes, Little Red One, Little Red One, where are you coming from? I come from my house. Where are you going? I'm going to school. What do you do at school? I learn to read and write. Why do you need to know how to read and write? For me to be a good citizen. What poet Sia Demo means by a good citizen change with time. School is a place where we try to fulfill education's 
promise. We go to school to learn, to do, to know, to nurture and develop into individuals. And at school, we learn to how to coexist with one another. That is an important skill we must know in this 21st century. Advancement in technology and urbanization will continue, but what is the world without good citizenship? So now, if you ask me why schools are cool, I will then tell you that schools are cool because we raise good citizens who will reach their highest potential through the place, the center, village, the school, with the teachers and peers and educators who champion for every child, bridge the connection between inside and outside of classrooms. Schools raise good citizens who promote peace and nurture for the betterment of society. And that is why schools are cool. Thank you very much.